Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. It's Leroy again, and today we are going to go through liquidity ratio. This is one of the three types of financial uh, analysis ratios that's included in the O levels POA syllabus. So I really find, I really hope you guys find it useful. And if you think a friend can benefit from this video, please share it with them. Free resource for everyone. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, liquidity ratio. It essentially tells us how well the business is equipped to pay for any short-term debts that they have to pay. Uh, and you remember in your statement of financial position, you have long-term uh, debts or non-current liabilities and current liabilities. Current liabilities are usually the ones that, are, that needs to be paid within the next 12 months. Uh, but non-current liabilities would be uh, the ones that are required to be paid off much later. So the liquidity ratio tells the reader of the financial statements or any uh, reader of these ratios uh, how equipped they are to meet their short-term debt, i.e. their current liabilities. Okay, so what types of uh, liquidity ratios are included in the uh, O-Levels POA exams? Uh, let's talk about part two and part three first, current ratios and quick ratios. So the denominator for these two are always current liabilities because we always want to understand how well we are able to cover or pay our current liabilities. Current ratio is just simply taking your current assets divided by current liabilities. As the name suggests, it's current ratio. So all the current, you know, current assets and current liability stuff are included in this equation. And quick ratio is a bit more stringent. You know, current assets can be made up of many things, right? Uh, cash at bank, uh, the uh, trade receivables, inventory. But if you look at just these three items, cash at bank, it's cash, it's the most liquid. You know, that's what people would uh, usually say. Cash is the most liquid of these three uh, because it's really in cash form. Trade receivables, that's one step to converting to cash and that's collecting your trade receivables from your customers. However, inventory, there's two steps to convert to cash. You got to sell your products to your customers and then you got to collect your uh, trade receivables from your customers. So it's a little less liquid than say cash or trade receivables. And that's where quick ratio, what is the, what is, uh, the uh, position of, it tells us the position of the business to pay its debt with any current assets that's quickly converted to cash. So it would include uh, cash at, uh, and the formula is current assets, less inventory, less prepayments. And these inventory and prepayments are usually the ones that are less liquid, that takes a few steps to convert to cash or takes a long time to convert to cash. The ratios are expressed in terms of, you know, one is to one or two is to one. So if it's one is to one, then for current ratios, then your current assets is actually equal to your current liabilities. If it's two is to one, then your current assets is twice as much in value as your current liabilities. So the higher that first number in the current ratio is, the more healthy that liquidity position is. Goes with current ratio, the same goes with quick ratio, the same concept, the same logic. Now, what is working capital? It's a simple equation that tells us how much is the total absolute value of current assets uh, is versus current liabilities. So how much in excess of current liabilities do we have in our current asset portfolio, right? So it's a simple formula to understand. Now let's see how these formulas work. So this is a very typical statement of financial position. I've put it across two years and just ignore 2020 for now. Let's look at 2019. I just want to illustrate how we calculate the three liquidity ratios that's included in your syllabus. So we start with current ratio. Current ratio is current liabilities, eh, sorry, current assets divided by current liabilities. Remember in these ratios, current liability is always the base and for current ratio, current asset, use, uh, use that keyword current, current asset would be the numerator. So in this case, you would have 101,500 divided by 32.5K, uh, 32 uh, which is 32,500. Now it says 3.1 times, right? It means that our current assets is 3.1 times higher or more than our current liabilities, which 
it's quite a good space to have, right? You uh, have only 32,000 of, of current liabilities and you have about 100,000 of current assets. So you should be able to cover that. Now, quick ratio is taking away inventory and prepayments, right? But we don't have prepayments here. So we just take away inventory. And in here, it's the current asset minus the inventory value of 30,000 and the result of that you divide it by current liabilities which is roughly about 70,000 divided by 32,000 it's still two times so it's still very healthy um, and working capital would be a simple equation of current assets minus current liabilities so you have 69,000 in excess of your current liabilities or current debt obligation uh, which puts you in a very good space Okay, now that we understand how to calculate liquidity ratios, it's important to learn how to understand or interpret trends across years and also three quite important questions that are listed here. Uh, what would impact liquidity ratios? How could we improve liquidity ratios? And why healthy liquidity position is important for the business. Now, uh, in this uh, table, we have uh, 2019 and 2020's financials for the same business. And uh, with this small table that I have below, I've calculated the trends of these three liquidity uh, ratios. Um, you would see that our current ratio, quick ratio and working capital is all on the uptrend, which means that things are improving. Now, when things are improving, it would mean that the business is more adequately prepared to cover and any short-term obligations that will come due in the next 12 months. Now, that's obviously a good position to have because if you are unable to cover your current liabilities in the next 12 months, let's say, for example, instead of 100,000 of current ratios you have here to cover 30,000, you only have 10,000. And if these 30,000 uh, of uh, payables come knocking at your door to ask for payment and you only have 10,000 of current assets to uh, pay for this, then you would be in trouble. You would have to go to a bank to ask for a bank loan. And if the bank declines, uh, then you would probably have to search to look at some of your non-current assets to see whether you can quickly sell them. But if you can't, then the company may have to close because they can't pay their debts and their suppliers will stop supplying them anything because they have not paid their debts, uh, their previous debts um, and they will have nothing to sell or worst case, suppliers will start suing the company. So that kind of answers why healthy liquidity position is important for the business. Now, the next thing is what would impact liquidity ratios? So anything that is related to movements in current assets all current liabilities will impact liquidity ratios. If there's movement in non-current assets or non-current liabilities or profitability, then by itself, it will not impact liquidity ratio. Okay. Um, then the thing is, how could we improve liquidity ratio? Because most exam questions will give you a trend and maybe the trend is downward trend and they will say that, hey, how can this business owner think about improving liquidity ratio? So a few ways to improve uh, liquidity ratios. Let's, if you look at current ratio, uh, how to improve current ratio, you're essentially wanting to make sure that your numerator is as high as possible, denominator as low as possible compared to the numerator, right? So for example, uh, some a lot of instances, uh, companies may buy motor vehicles or furnitures and fittings uh, using cash or buy it on credit. Well, if you buy it using cash, then you would debit, let's say, motor vehicles and credit cash and bank. So your cash and bank position will reduce, your current assets therefore would reduce as well, and therefore your current ratio, which is current asset divided by current liability, would be lower. Now, if you want to avoid that, instead of buying it using cash, you can buy it using a long-term financing mechanism. And there are some long-term financing mechanism which you don't have to pay everything within the current period, but you would pay it over a series of years. Now, of course, that uh, would attract interest uh, on loan, and this interest on loan, uh, you have to weigh the benefits and costs uh, accordingly to see whether it's more beneficial for the business to absorb the interest on loan versus paying uh, it using cash. Now, um, when we talk about quick ratio, quick ratio is 
uh, essentially you know, cash and trade receivables divided by current liabilities in this case. So if that's the case, you want to keep inventory as low as possible as well and you don't want to buy too much inventory because inventory uh if you let's say you purchase inventory you could debit inventory credit bank so you're actually transferring uh some of your cash at bank balance into inventory but if you don't need so much inventory then you rather keep it in cash and if you do then quick ratio will actually improve okay so i hope that would give you a bit of color into some of these questions Let's take a look at some useful links on the next slide. Uh, there's so much information in the internet nowadays and if you Google liquidity ratio, you will get tons of information and one of those that I've extracted from investopedia.com uh, and which talks about the gives you write-ups on the contents or even videos on what liquidity ratio is uh, tells us you know liquidity ratio is a company's ability to pay off its current debt uh, which is current liabilities uh, these are the quick uh, the, the common liquidity ratios which we've covered you know in our previous slides and again it reiterates the short-term nature uh, in terms of the uh, how liquidity ratio measures just the company's ability to cover short-term obligations. So, uh, hope that's useful. Uh, if you have any questions about this lesson, please let me know at poa for you at gmail.com or any questions at all for that matter. Uh, you can also reach me at my channel. Uh, in the meantime, practice, 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 and all the best.